Oh my god, you guys. Hi everyone, welcome to today. My mom is here and we're doing a fun little uh, brand deal together that we're super excited about. So we're filming that, that's why I'm talking because I have to for the brand deal. But I just had a moment of like, oh my god, are you freaking kidding me? Like it reminds me, okay, this bush, I was talking about this in my vlog yesterday. I don't know if I ended up putting it in the vlog or not, but this is a really cool tree bush thing that's like a, it's like almost like a, a tent or something. Like it's like, looks all big around, but like inside is like all the, I think it's like a willow tree or something. And you guys, this is a mulberry tree. Do you understand why this is infuriating for me? If you watched me like a year ago, two years ago, we had silkworms. Flynn wanted silkworms, we got silkworms, and it was the bane of my existence trying to find mulberry leaves to feed these silkworms. I couldn't find them anywhere. I ordered them on Etsy for like, I spent hundreds of dollars on these freaking silkworms. And it was so frustrating trying to find the leaves and trying to like keep them alive, like in the fridge, wrapped up all nice, and like feeding them every day. Like, oh my gosh, those freaking silkworms man they drove me totally bananas crazy but I wanted to make sure they were well taken care of and fed properly and all that stuff I'm not getting any more silkworms but the fact that I just have a huge tree of those leaves in my backyard is hilarious to me it reminds me of if you ever seen Castaway that movie with Tom Hanks you know he lives on a deserted island for a long time and then once he's finally rescued he like sees like a display of just food just sitting there rotting and like a big bucket of ice that's just like right there and how easy and simple it is and how these are little things that people take for granted that's how I feel right now I feel like Tom Hanks and looking at that mulberry tree of like the things I went through the money I spent the searches I did like how hard I tried to find mulberry leaves and literally there's just a huge bush of it in my backyard now like so easy oh my gosh and then I found out our neighbor had a mulberry tree that had huge mom leaves. don't tell me that <laughs> Hello everyone, today is an exciting day. My mom just left. We had so much fun and I'm super excited for you all to see what we did. But right now, we are going to a fair. Flynn has never been to the fair before. I remember going a couple of times when I was little but I also remember it being expensive and hot. So we would get to go on like one or two rides and then leave. I don't necessarily remember it being enjoyable but I think Flynn will love it. One thing I didn't really expect before having kids is how long it takes to leave the house. The amount of things I have to pack just to leave our home is absolutely bananas. Diapers, wipes, snacks, water, sunscreen, sweaters, spare clothes, toys, band-aids, medicine, hats, shoes, strollers, etc. And somehow I still always forget stuff. Anyway, it's time to pack up for the fair. Let's go.
just pretending. It's so weird. The fair was super fun. Kids are all asleep and I'm working on a new project. I got Flynn this calendar and he loves it. But so do the babies. They always rip off all the magnets and Flynn is really good at sharing with them, but I can tell it stresses him out. So I decided to make a separate magnet wall for the babies. I'm just going to put up this dry erase board and I made some magnets for them to play with. I showed him the magnets earlier today and they really loved them. Maisie even said, Jojo, for the first time. Okay, Maisie. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I should definitely be working right now but I'm doing this instead. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay it's time for me to wrap this up because I have a ton of editing to do tonight. But before I go I'm going to answer a couple of quick tortilla talk questions. Santana asked, Are you still able to carry both of the twins at the same time or are they too big now? They're growing up so fast, it's so cute to watch. Okay, I'm gonna answer these verbally because it just takes a long time to type it all out and get all the audio, whatever. So yes, I can definitely still carry both the twins at the same time. It definitely is hard if I'm going long distances or whatever. And I only do it if I like absolutely have to, like if no one else is around to help because they are pretty heavy. But um, yes, and I feel like I will be able to do it until they're full grown adults because if you carry twins in your body, like, in your uterus. I feel like once you do that, you can do literally anything. Like, I feel like I could pick up a bus. I feel like I could pick up an airplane. I feel like it's like nothing to me to hold the baby. Sometimes I pick up both kids and if someone else is around, they'll be like, oh my God, how are you doing that? How are you picking them both up at the same time? And I think it, it honestly, it's just like, when you're a twin mom, there's like a different kind of strength in some weird muscle that no one knows about and no one cares about. A muscle that no one could ever work out at a gym or something. And I'm a weak person. I have no muscle mass in my body. I'm very weak. But whatever the muscle is, they can carry twins at the same time. Like, <laughs> I have a really big one of those. <laughs> but yeah, I can definitely still carry them both at the same time. But you never see it because I'm always holding a camera in one hand when I'm vlogging and holding a baby in the other. But I need both arms to carry both babies at the same time. But yes, I do it. Next question. I've commented this before, but I thought I'd mention it again. When the kids get older and you and Eric want to spend time with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. Maisie Mondays, Wesley Wednesdays, Flint Fridays, I think that's so perfect how that works out. Okay, this is, I love this idea. Having Maisie Mondays, Wesley Wednesdays, and Flint Fridays. Now, obviously to be like, okay, we're gonna have special one-on-one -on -one time with each one of you three different days of the week for all of eternity. That sounds amazing. I don't know how realistic that is, but I still think we could do Maisie Monday, Wesley Wednesday, Flint Friday. And it just means like, oh, you get to pick what's for breakfast today, or like you get to have a special treat today or something like to make it special. I just love that. I never realized that it was Maisie Monday, Wesley Wednesday, Flynn Friday. Like that's so perfect. So thank you for the suggestion. I'm totally going to use it. I'm just going to answer one more because I do have a lot of work to do. So let's see what Andrea said. Tortilla talk question. Did Trent ever give the twins their names in sign language? Flynn's is so perfect for him. Okay. This is a great question. So my brother, Flynn, <laughs> whoa, Flynn's not my brother. Trent's my brother. Trent is deaf and he has cochlear implants and he is giving the kids their 
sign names because to have a name in sign, like it needs to be given to you by someone in the deaf or hard of hearing community. That's what I understand. I'm pretty sure that's correct. But if I'm wrong, please, someone from the deaf or hard of hearing community, please correct me. But I think that is correct. That's at least what my brother has always told me. So my brother gave my whole family our sign names and mine is this, it's a C and just goes on your chin like that. And Flynn's is an F in sign language. And it goes like this, like an excavator, like it's scooping things up. And he still has not named Wesley or Maisie or given them names yet. He's like, it's hard. Like I feel you really have to know someone in order to give them a name. And it's not that he doesn't know them. He's plays with them all the time. He loves them. He's obsessed with them, but their personalities, you know, they're, they're babies. They're still growing and learning and changing. So for right now he's like, well, Wes is easy because you can sign Wes really fast. Like W E S is Wes. So you can literally just go like that, but that wasn't his name. He said, for now I could do that. And then Maisie, we've just been going like M I'll usually go like, M-A-I and then I'll just be like Maisie, you know, like I won't even finish spelling it, but like it is pretty fast to finger spell, but still I, he's going to give them names when he gives them names and I'm not pushing it. I'm not rushing him, but yeah, they don't have their names yet to answer your question. I'm going to go get some work done guys. We had so much fun at the fair. It was a crazy busy day for me. I worked a lot and had a blast with the kiddos. It was chaotic. I have a very hard time. Maybe other parents who have three kids can help me and give me some advice right now. I have a really hard time when I do fun experiences or just even not fun, but just any daily life experiences with my kids. When and I didn't have the twins yet when it was just Flynn. I felt like every moment, obviously I only had one kid, I could really soak up and enjoy. Not that I don't enjoy every moment with all three, but what I mean is like, if I took Flynn to the beach, I could just stare at Flynn's face the entire time and watch him take it all in. Looking at the seagulls, look at the sand, feel the sand. How does it make him feel looking at the water? I could just soak in every facial expression he made, every body movement he made, every babble that came out of his mouth when he was a baby. I could really just absorb all of that. And I loved that. And when you have three kids, especially when you have twins, I can't do that because I'm not three people in three different places. I'm one person and they are three people. So I can't soak up every single moment with each child at all times, obviously, because I'm, that doesn't, that's impossible. I try my hardest to like whoever is having a moment to really soak that in with that person. I don't know. I feel like the fair was super fun. We had a total blast, but it was so hard because I wanted to like, when we were at the animals, like I wanted to be with Maisie because she was like mooing for the cows and talking and pointing and giggling. But I wanted to be with Wesley because he was talking to the animals and making the sounds they were making. And I want to be with Flynn because he was jumping and running around to each animal and talking about them. And like, I could only be with one kid at a time. And I was like, I'm missing it. I, and I wanted to enjoy the moments I was having with whichever child I was with at the time. But then I felt like guilty and felt bad. I was missing out on the times with the other ones. I was like, oh, I want to be with you and enjoy this, but I'm missing something over there. Like, and it's really hard for my brain because I'm like hearing these things happening over here, but I'm trying to be in the moment with this, but my brain's also over there and trying to be here. And that happens to me often. Whenever we go do something as a family and three kids are all excited about something or experiencing something new for the first time. I have a very hard time. My brain feels like it's going to explode and my heart feels like it's going to explode. I feel guilty, but also feel like I'm not doing enough, but also feel like I'm trying my best and I couldn't do anything more. I don't know. I'm just, I have a really hard time with that. Every time we leave a situation like that, whether it be the beach or the fair or wherever we go, I feel so exhausted after. Like my brain was on hyper super drive, like trying to focus on all three and like soak up all the moments, but also worried about soaking up all the moments. I'm like, did I even enjoy that? Or was I just so stressed about soaking up all the moments and not missing anything that I like, did I enjoy it? I get so exhausted when I like, I feel like I ran a marathon and we were at the fair for like an hour. We didn't even do that much. And I wasn't exhausted from doing a lot. I was exhausted because my brain was tired from being in like super drive, trying to like focus on all three kids at the same time and really soak up every moment and experience every moment with them. At one point, Flynn wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, but the babies weren't big enough to go on the Ferris wheel. So we left the babies down with Coco and my dad and the nanny and they were playing and going around looking at stuff with them. But I was the whole time I was on the Ferris wheel, Flynn was having a blast, but I was thinking about like, oh, I hope the babies are okay. Are they watching us do this? Are they excited? Are they upset? Do they need me? Are, are they playing with another game? Are they getting excited about something else that I'm not seeing? Am I missing something? Yeah. So it was just like, that was hard. And like when Flynn was riding the tractor, I was like so excited and wanted to watch every second. But I was like, oh, but I want to see Wesley see his brother riding a tractor because he loves tractors and he loves his brother. Is he excited? Is Maisie interested? Or is she being like judgmental of Maisie? Like I have such a hard time with that. And I'm wondering if um, other mamas of three kids or more can help me not be so panicky in those moments. Do you have any advice? Because I would really love love advice with that because I want to just be in the moment and enjoy those moments but it's it's just hard I don't know how to fix that let me know what you guys think um but I love you all so much and thank you for watching and I will see you oh I'm not supposed to sing I'll see you tomorrow bye you can relax Colleen and Eric have a podcast the world is scary and we're locked in our home but now we have big microphones so you can relax that's the name of our podcast